know when uh, I'm live. It's going. Okay. So, uh, good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Saturday Night Lockdown. It's uh, it's great that we already did uh, four episodes, actually three, and uh, tonight is going to be the fourth one. And uh, uh, let me just uh, close this. <laughs> and uh, it's it is it is great, um, and uh, it's unbelievable the support that we got for this thing. And uh, yeah, we I really love you. We all like I'm talking on behalf of the whole band. We really love you and. Um, uh, and tonight we have like uh, it's a you know it, it is a, he is an idol for me is uh, one of uh, the most inspiring musician for for me because uh, I really I I really love the the stuff he did in um, several projects and uh, we're gonna have uh, Adrian from At the Gate. So uh, first of all, I wanna thank a little bit. Uh, of course, uh, Nuclear Blast for uh, the support on doing this. And uh, also, I want to uh, thank you once again for following us and for supporting us in this new endeavor. Uh, I really love you guys. So uh, let's get it started and uh, have uh, Adrian Hin. Hi, Adrian. Hi. How are you doing? I'm very, I'm, I'm very good. I'm, you know, I'm... Uh, it, it is a, a special night for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, uh, how is it? Uh, so, uh, you everyone knows you're uh, you're Swedish, but you don't live in Sweden, right? No, that's right. I live in England since uh, 20 years back. I moved here in, uh, well, it's actually 21 years wow. this year. Uh, I moved here in uh, 99 when I joined uh, Cradle of Filth. And sure. then... Uh, I met my wife like uh, about a year after moving here, and then I've just obviously we have a life here, so no point in yeah. moving back to Sweden. And yeah. uh, before there's lockdown, uh, obviously it's it was like it's it's not really a big uh, journey to travel to Sweden for rehearsals and things like that. So so yeah. it works well. It's cool. So how is the lockdown there now? Oh, it's pretty. Uh, I can't remember if it's five weeks or six weeks we've had it now, mm -hmm. but uh, you're basically allowed to go out for exercise one time a day, and you can go to the shop and buy food, but uh, you can't go to get you can't go two people from the same household. There has to be only one person, and uh, you have to keep the two meters distance wherever you are where there's other people. But uh, yeah, it's kind of. Now that the weather is getting nicer, it's uh, getting more Stop. difficult to stay inside. But yeah. um, I mean, we, we, me and my wife are pretty lucky. We have like a pretty big garden, so we can sit in the garden. And but like some of my friends, they live in in flats and they don't have any even a balcony, and it's you know it's tough. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, yeah, there are all these people that are living in apartments right now. And it's, here in Italy, it's uh, almost two months that we are locked down. Yeah. And uh, yeah, especially in the north, a part of the country, it's going gonna, it's gonna to last longer. Maybe th this area is pretty safe, so we're going to have like, they're going to reduce restrictions uh, next week yeah. a little bit. So we're, so we're going to be allowed to go out a little bit, but... In the north, it's going to be a little bit more complicated, and uh, it's yeah. going to take longer to 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 be fixed. And yeah, let's see, sure. let's see, let's see. They, there's been a, a lot of reports about Italy on the news here, and it's it's pretty scary. I saw this uh, documentary from a hospital in yeah. in Bergamo. Yeah. It was just, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, Milan, Bergamo, they, they were the first areas that they got this, uh, and um, it all spread in uh, the whole region, and it was like almost overnight, you know, so mm. it was very hard to predict. They started to have restrictions pretty early, but it wasn't enough, and, uh, you know, like, it's pretty complicated, you know, when you have this, uh, you can a, li a little bit, as I said, it's very hard to predict, and whatever restriction you put on the people, you know, they just uh, they you you need uh, you need facts 
to justify, yeah. you know, this kind of stuff. So you, they had to wait a little bit longer, but then, you know, everything exploded. So. Yeah, that's nuts. All right. So the, all the, sorry, yeah? Yeah, it's interesting because uh, in Sweden, they haven't really got any lockdown. They have uh, just restrictions on, like, gatherings of uh, large, uh, large groups of gatherings. So you could be, like, up to 50 people. But, like, restaurants and bars and things are still open. And all normal shops still open. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's very different uh, from country to country, you know. There's, mm. uh, but you know, let's see, let's see. I really hope that they're gonna be over. Like it's gonna last uh, at least uh, till the end of the year, and uh, then so, with yeah. the vaccine, and maybe they will find a treatment that works well. I don't know. Let's hope so. so. All the other at the gates guys are are in Sweden, though. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, they're working and going to their jobs as normal. So it's, yeah. it's like it's not really any different for them. Okay. Yeah. We have a we have a WhatsApp group that we talk amongst uh, ourselves in the band. And uh, yeah. I was seeing um, like Tompa showing pictures of albums that he's bought. He's been out record shopping. So okay. Like, so it seems that life goes on as normal for them there, apart from obviously the, all the cancelled yeah. gigs. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's what something I wanted to ask you. You know, like how this affected you. Uh, we had to cancel almost everything. Uh, yeah. We're waiting, for, hoping that uh, the stuff that we had booked for the last part of the year uh, is gonna somehow yeah. they're gonna find a way to make it work. But what what happened with your plans? Yeah, so uh, this year was going to always be writing the new album, the follow-up to to Drink from the Night itself. So we, but we were. It's also 25 years uh, anniversary for Slaughter of the Soul. So we were going to do some uh, <laughs> <laughs> Slaughter of the Soul show, and uh, you had like uh, you know, you know, I'm a big fan, you know, of this album of yeah, Slaughter of the of Soul that album, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's you know, it's it's really? crazy the, how how this album has have, affected uh, so many people. It's, I have uh, a little bit. Sorry, man. I have a little bit of lag. I have a little bit of lag from maybe it's a connection. Everybody is streaming nowadays. So <laughs> yeah. Can you can you say again, please? Yeah. It it's crazy how uh, how how many people uh, this album has affected. When we wrote it, it seemed like. No one gave a shit, and then the band split up, and then all of a sudden, all people, are, loads of people, are talking about this album, and yeah, it's. And, uh, okay, so I, this is uh, this is my perspective, but I think many people will agree with me. Like slaughter of the soul is a game changer. You know, it's uh, mm. something that. Yeah, maybe you didn't realize back then what you mm. were doing, but, uh, you know, it's a starting point for many bands. And mm. Flash God, uh, for us, was um, essential to build, you know, our, uh, yeah, to, it, it, had, it had a great impact on the creativity and uh, for us. And that's why we wanted to pay tribute at the very beginning. We were super young, but yeah. uh, we wanted to, you know, yeah, we did the we did the cover because uh, know, it was like okay, it was yeah, it was our style, and uh, for some people it was super cool, for some people it was it sucked, but yeah. for us it was like okay, uh, all the bands uh, in there's nothing you know every every band has this uh, you know that that was because. Back in the day, some uh, some other bands were talking like, "Oh, we have no influence. We just, you know, defining a new genre or stuff like mm -hmm. that." And we were like in this uh, technical thing, you know, technical genre. So we wanted to show that uh, there's uh, Swedish death metal and uh, melodic death metal. How this mm -hmm. music that apparently in the genre was uh, simpler, you know, affected yeah. our play, you know, and yeah. how still is. Uh, this this albums are you know iconic albums so it's still new every every time you listen to that album you you hear you know perfection so i, I don't want to kiss your ass but it's no, real no, for real that's fine. It's, uh, that's, so, fine. that's uh, fine dude it's it, it, it yeah that is uh, kind of uh, 
remarkable to me as well that like it sort of really stood the test of time this album and even the mix you know that was recorded to uh, to quarter inch tape so there was a like there was no chance of us doing any editing when we recorded the like the yeah. drums for example and i think uh, like when we did uh, blinded by fear i did over 80 takes on this song to make it, like, to make it. yeah to get it because we wanted it to be like really machine like you know and yeah. uh, and uh, like to the point where like oh no he's playing on a different part of the ride symbol and you can tell now a cut d- cut cut and just, <laughs> yeah. like over and over again that my hands were actually bleeding at the end of it it was just yeah yeah but uh, it was it it definitely was worth it man yeah <laughs> but it, it it's funny you know when uh, we started touring for the album. We went on tour in America with um, support to Morbid Angel. So it was uh, Dissection, Morbid Angel, or At The Gates, Morbid Angel. And wow. uh, I, I was uh, one afternoon, I was talking to Pete Sandoval, and he was saying, man, why don't you play the blast? On the, on the, on the intro riff, I was like, dude, I couldn't last like two, <laughs> se- two seconds. Then, uh, like a few years later, your version comes out and it's got the blast beat. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you see, uh, Ed the Gates is uh, one of the most influential bands for me from Europe, and Morbid Angel as well is one of the most influential bands for me in uh, mm. you know, from United States. So yeah, you see, so you didn't know, but uh, in the end, you created <laughs> a monster. <laughs> Maybe you didn't, you just didn't want to. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Know, I mean, real, it's, me, it was... I, I mean, it's it's really it's a, it's an honor seeing that uh, it's affected so many people in a, in a positive way, you know. And uh, you can you can see it now when uh, when we're playing gigs and like a lot of people my age uh, like lost their hair and you see them still going crazy in the front with yeah. the bald head. It's, uh, but you know, it's, a, it's also a course for the new generations, man, because mm-hmm. every time I write a cool riff and at the end it's like, oh, fuck, this is at the gates. And then I, I play another one. It was like, oh, fuck, this is at the gates. And this happens <laughs> many times when I listen to new songs. I was like, wait, now the at the gates part starts and then immediately super melodic uh, riff and like uh, super, you know, fast skank. Yet it's, you know, it's a trademark and uh, it's very hard to avoid it, you know, as uh, as I said, it's uh, it became it became a chorus for us. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's really That's nice. Cool. That's cool. All right. So let's also read some comments from you guys. You know, I've seen uh, people writing a lot of stuff and uh, we much love you. Much love to everyone. All right, so uh, how did you how did you start the playing uh, playing drums back in oh. the days? Oh. oh, that was in um, my in eighty one. My my parents moved to uh, a little town south. It wasn't a, wasn't even a town. A little village south of uh, Gothenburg, and okay. um, um, my friend. I made a friend and he, his older brother was into heavy metal. And, okay. uh, and uh, we used to sit in his room and he would play us records like Back in Black and Let There Be Rock and uh, some, um, the first Twisted Sister album. And um, later also Judas Priest. Yeah. And, uh, and at that point we were like, fuck, we got to start a band. And my friend actually had a guitar. And he said, uh, "What do you?" I, I wasn't sure what I should, what I should play. And he said, "Oh, you should, uh, you should play the drums." And uh, of course, like our family, there's like not really any music background. Mm-hmm. I think we had like uh, three or four tapes in the house, like Boney M and Doctor Hook and Abba. That was <laughs> it, <laughs> as far as music goes. So when I when I came home, my my parents were actually really supportive and I didn't have to hustle them for too long before there was a drum kit. And uh, we started, we started playing together, trying to, or wow. trying to play. <laughs> Cause there, yeah, there was no, you know, there was no YouTube. There was no music teachers. There was like, we're in the middle of uh, this 
of nowhere in Sweden. And um, yeah, but eventually we managed to work out uh, how to play a song, and we we could play "I Love Rock and Roll" by Joan Jett. But you know that took us all almost a year to work out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it, it, but later later we we um, we started high high school. I think uh, it would be. And uh, we had a music teacher there, and he joined our band playing bass. And he wow. taught he taught me a lot of stuff like what to listen for in music and what's important, like with uh, rock drumming and stuff. And uh, yeah, he was a, a real cornerstone in my music background. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah, it's uh, but, yeah, but, this is a. Uh... I mean, music music was starting to get heavier and heavier, mm-hmm. and then uh, eventually in '86, I I was in another school and I met some kids that were into thrash and were listening again, si- sitting in a friend's house and listening to albums. And then tape trading was getting really big, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, uh, it came to the point where I got to have a double, I got to learn to play double bass. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and my da- uh, it's always uh, there is uh, there's always that moment you know <laughs> yeah you never, and uh, drummer's career was like oh fuck what, how does this guy do that you know it's like it's yeah. double bass oh. and then yeah. a new world yeah because for me it was uh, like um it happened already in uh so sort of like 83 when uh i heard uh red hot with motley Crue the first time and I couldn't work out what he was doing on the drums in the beginning. You know, he's playing double bass. And uh, but eventually I saw, I saw a picture of his drum kit. Oh, he's got two bass drums. Of course, that's how he does it. And then uh, my dad, he had this idea, like, because I said, I need another bass drum for my drum kit. And he said, oh, he had another idea. So he bought another bass drum, single bass drum pedal. And he made this little contraption that both bass drums both single pedals on one bass drum. So wow. I sat with the knees uh, tight together <laughs> and the snare on my left. And yeah. each, and so it was double bass the whole time, basically. As, it, yeah, as yeah. soon as you put your foot on the other pedal, there was no way of getting to the hi-hat or... So you're, you're saying that your father projected the, the first uh, double pedal ever. <laughs> well... <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> for me, he did. Uh, yeah. For me, he did. And then, yeah. um, like a few years later, uh, or like maybe two years later, uh, we were in the music store and we saw one of the first uh, uh, Pearl double bass pedals that had come out. And it had, uh, remember the beater it used to go up and in, and it was like not a straight beater. Yeah, yeah it was. And um, yeah, so I, uh, I, got, I got that pedal and still start, started practicing practicing with that and from then on it was just uh, you know. awesome man yeah and then you so and then the, the, the same thing happened uh, with you with your brother because it, the, i seen that he made some statements that you got him into metal into drumming actually yeah some, so uh, but, some stuff you know what hap- used to happen he uh, he wasn't really interested in music at all. He was a, he was really good at playing tennis actually, and okay. he would be he would be out practicing tennis. And then, is as soon as I learned something new, I would bring him down to the basement where the drum room was and say, "Check this out! Check this out!" And he would stand there with his hands in his pockets and just look at me, and <laughs> like not really say anything. But then, you know, it came to the point when I. Um, just before I moved to Gothenburg and joined at the gates, all of a sudden, uh, my brother's on, he's been on the kit when I haven't been at home. And he's like, mm-hmm. check this out. And he's uh, like playing Sunday, bloody Sunday by you too on the, on the drums. Wow. And I had never, I hadn't really awesome. seen him sitting on the kit and he was just such a natural, you know? Uh, and uh, just within, I don't know, like six months or so, he was in he was in a death metal band, Eucharist, and uh, yeah, I know I know them very and, well. Uh, I remember he 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 came home from school one day and he said, uh, 
dude, they're going to kick me out of the band if I don't learn to play double bass. <laughs> and <laughs> the guitar, <laughs> the guitar player had said, "Incredible like, story, man." Yeah, if the guitar player said, uh, "Like, if you don't learn to play double bass, you you're out of the band in in a month, basically." And he was just practicing, 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 practicing. And you know, you've heard that demo, like. Have you heard the first demo? Defer? Yeah. The it, Ugarist like, demo. It's just, yeah, in, insane drumming on that. But he, you know, he's yeah. like, a, he really is a natural. He, he, he picked it up so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe, maybe it, maybe it was uh, also, he was helped by the fact that like he saw, saw me playing and uh, there mm -hmm. was music happening in the house. Meanwhile, when I was starting, it was there was nothing. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Absolutely. So, that, yeah, I, I, I want to, yeah, I want to point out a couple of things uh, out of this uh, super cool story. The first thing is that um, it's uh, it's definitely inspiring, and uh, I think it's very good to, to, sorry, I, to I, tell. I can't hear you. You cannot hear me. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? There, hello? Hello? Can you hear me now? Yeah, bloody it. Yeah, my bloody AirPods connected to the phone. Okay, no problem. <laughs> okay, so sorry. I said that uh, I, wanted, I wanted to point out a couple of stuff, or a couple of things uh, out of this, you know, incredible story that you told us is, the first thing is that the, it is inspiring and uh, yeah, I think uh, it's super cool that people and other musicians can see the normality of the starts of such great drummers, you know, like you guys, uh, uh, two guys in a family, you know, they, they, you just started trying out, trying to explore, uh, you know, and stuff like that. And all of a sudden you became legendary drummers. So, you know, everyone can do it if you put enough dedication and you work hard on what you do. And also, uh, uh, another another thing that you said uh, that I completely agree because a lot of people asking me when you started playing drums, you know, you developed skills very fast. Uh, it was like yes, but uh, I've been uh, playing death metal for many years before, and I was watching drummers playing, and yeah. it's a totally different thing. You know, you you just have to let your body adapt to what you're doing next, and uh, you it it is a different story, you know. Yeah, it's, for sure. It's not just like starting from scratch or even watching DVDs or instructional videos. It is important, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah. Uh, but leaving the death metal vibe in the same room uh, with a drummer struggling with blast beats and double kick and watching him like changing settings and trying new stuff, exploring, it's uh, experience, you know, that you get sure. uh, personal experience. So in, in that moment, some, someone else is struggling for you, is giving you information, know-how uh, for when you, you will start, you know? So uh, yeah. it's super cool. It, it helped me a lot. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And um, there's a lot of people writing a cradle field. Uh, yeah, you, <laughs> you know that you, you've been in uh, such great album from cradle fields as well, you know? Yeah, that, I mean, that was uh, that was a, a, a big changing point in in my life, uh, musically, mm -hmm. and also you know the fact that I left my home country and moved to another country, and uh, like not really knowing what was going to happen, because uh, like I didn't know that music was going to be my livelihood at that point. You know, like I was thinking, okay, I move. Because I did at the time I didn't have a job in Sweden, mm -hmm. and uh, but I didn't know that the, uh, coming to England and playing with Cradle was going to be full time. That wasn't even discussed at the at the time when I moved. Uh, so, yeah, so it was a, it's a really was a big change, and then like playing in a band that's uh, like fully active, it became. You know, we rehearsed five days a week, like seven hours a day. We'd, that's wow. before, we, before we started using computers. That's how all, 
all of Midian was written in the rehearsal room. And we, we'd just be in there and, you know, there's six different me- six different members all shouting at each other, different, I'd try this, try this, try this. So it was a, like a really hectic time. Yeah. And, and uh, by the time uh, we came to do the, the follow-up, uh, Bit Sweets uh, to Succubi, uh, we'd sort of uh, got our own home recording setups. I had a Roland V drum kit and... We were doing demos, so okay. it, it became a lot easier to, so for someone to present an idea, they would send some riffs to me. I would record beats and we'd send them mm-hmm. back and forwards. So it became a lot more efficient. But uh, you know, that's the way we're kind of working without the gates now. And like a lot of the session projects that I do, we work like that remotely. And yeah. I kind of, I kind of really miss the days when uh, you're in the rehearsal room playing together and creating music together. And, uh, yeah. But in, in lockdown, I guess you should be happy that you at least have a electric yeah. to play. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is actually the, uh, the new dimension and also the only one that we, that we have right now, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, even now we have, uh, our drummer uh, is, uh, is in Vienna. So it's yeah. far away. So the only way to to uh, work on new stuff is technically sending him stuff, and you know, yeah, it is. And now it it became for every member because we cannot go out. So yeah, uh, yeah. So hopefully, uh, but yeah, the feeling of the pra- the, the feeling the, the the atmosphere in the practice room when you you when you gather, you drink, and you and you play at. Uh, that's great. It's always great, and it, it always be. You know, whatever, uh, whatever. E- even if you're not professional, a professional, you know, musician, it's still the, one of the best feeling in my life. Yeah, and I think uh, you know that's uh, like what has gone. Mi- what's uh, gone missing a little bit in in new metal is uh, that, uh, like a lot of bands, write their stuff on computers, mm-hmm. and it, it stays in the computer realm. It's not sort of transferred into like a, a, a living, breathing thing amongst, because yeah. you always have, you always have it there with the click and it's, you know, it's, um, we're, we're actually talking about when we're going to do the next Haunted album to like record fully without a click, that we just wow. re- rehearse the songs and play them live together. Yeah, it, to get the feeling. Yeah, yeah. The real, but, yeah. That it sounds like a band playing live together, yeah. which like I I personally miss that with a lot of music that's coming out at the moment. Yeah, because there's a sense of urgency in music that um, that's uh, sort of played live. Yeah, when it's you, the, I I feel you. I understand yeah. this. Yeah, it's uh you know what for example what we do with our band in our band is totally uh, different and way more complex. So this uh, stuff is, it helped us a lot at the very beginning, especially when the means were super poor to mm. to do something, you know, with uh, yeah. our ideas. But now we are going back to the organic sound, going back to the idea that uh, uh, the more, uh, the most contribution that we have from others, you know, other musicians, and also the acoustic contribution, so the performance, you know, yeah. uh, makes a huge difference. And it yeah. made a huge difference in our la- latest album. But mm-hmm. again, you know, it takes time for a band like us to to reach that point that we really can, you know, go back to the natural vibe, fully, yeah. you know, in the sound and everything. So I really hope that that day will come, you know, yeah, very, yeah, for very sure. soon. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> And I, uh, one thing, did you like, I know you like, but uh, I want to make like a little bit of promotion to, mm-hmm. to this girl. Did you like the caricature that Epi did? I did. Yeah. I, I, that, that is I, unbelievably I, good. <laughs> especially the time lapse. Yeah, I, the time I love lapse. it when it starts with a, like what looks like a ball and then all of a sudden <laughs> there's a chain and it's amazing. Yeah, it's it, it it is incredible, and uh, so she's super talented. She designed uh, 
the logo of the Saturday Night Lockdown, and she did many caricatures of many uh, of many musicians. Yeah. So if you want to support there, uh, she has a Patreon, which is uh, www.patreon.com slash art, and uh, she is... Uh, She's uh, working every day on new material, new stuff. So she, if you want to support her, just go there and, uh, you know, uh, you know, follow her and uh, she will appreciate it for sure. So thank you, guys. Yeah. All right. We go on and we read some questions because we talked a lot and uh, we didn't we didn't read much. Uh, all right. So. Uh, what is this? Uh, this is people, you know, from all over the world, uh, saying hi and uh, asking when we are going to be back touring. Uh, we have no idea. I don't think you have an idea. Do you, do you have, uh, any tour plans that, uh, already or? I mean, we have, uh, still got dates booked in, uh, August in America, but I know they're not going to happen. They, they just haven't been cancelled yet. We have okay. also got some uh, dates in uh, the late summer, but, you know, they're going to be cancelled as well. For sure, I'd be very surprised yeah. if we're doing it. I'd be very surprised if we're doing any shows this year. If we are, I'd yeah. be happy, but, like, I'd be very surprised. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's... Uh... Yes, I think that yeah, m m like almost all the festivals are cancelled now. Mm. So uh, I don't know. Maybe in the fall we're gonna have uh, some. I, I have a, I have a mixed feelings because of course I'm a musician. I'm a touring musician. I live of it, so it is important for us to go on tour. Essential. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel weird. I think it's gonna be weird. Like. How does it work, like, with this, this kind of, like, number of people or restrictions in the venues? I mean, like, they go in and they have to stay, like, one meter away from one from each other. So no mosh pit, nothing. And, like, I don't know. I mean, it, it's too, it's going to be super strange. I think this is going to last even after they, they start reopening the venues, you know? Yeah. It's going to last at least until the next year. See, see there's, a, there's another aspect of it as well, is that, uh, you know, a lot of people are really suffering financially at the moment. And, uh, yeah. like, when, when, when the restrictions are lifted, perhaps going to gigs isn't going to be the first thing that people have to worry about, you know. Like, a lot of people losing their jobs. I think there's going to be, like, really mm -hmm. profound... Damage financially. Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah. like I have a friend. Uh, she she's a promoter here in London, and uh, you know she's mm -hmm. already thinking about getting another job, like a, a completely different uh, uh, type of job, because uh, yeah. like like there's going to be. I hope I hope that it's uh, just going to be as easy as restrictions are lifted and everything goes back to normal. But, you know, I, I, I'm not, mm. I'm not so sure that that's it. Can you imagine like every band that hasn't toured, they're going to want to tour now. Like when the restrictions are, yeah. like the venues will be booked I, I like for five years solid. Seven days. Of yeah. 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 I think, I think that, um, yeah, that, that, it might be that uh, after all this crisis, you know, all the, you like many places are going to be overcrowded for sure. And, uh, and yes, it's, uh, it's going to be hard to, this crisis is going to last uh, longer than, you know, just the, the virus crisis. So yes, yeah. of course, after the lockdown, it's, this is going to affect the, the whole thing for sure. But at the same time, I'm kind of, Oh, maybe I'm just a dumb optimist. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I feel like that. Uh, yeah, I feel like that music and especially metal and all the underground music, like properly underground music, it's something that people. Uh, I think that they they need it. You know, as much as yeah. we need. I mean, yeah. 
I think you can, you can, you know, if you listen to music just for like pure entertainment, so there's no dedication behind, you know, yeah. then it's something that you can avoid. I mean, like, yeah, I turn on the radio, I pay no attention, uh, just something, some noise going on. So I'm not going to spend money on uh, some pop art artist this summer. It's super expensive festival stuff, stuff like that. But for mm. metal and rock and uh, all the alternative music, I think it's a little bit different because uh, the passion in the fans, you know, yeah, is uh, yeah. totally different. So no, for... uh, I, that, that is what I'm seeing now. We reprojected our activity. I was a death metal singer two months ago. And now I'm uh, like a TV host, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I rebuilt it my life. I'm reshaping my activity uh, weekly and yeah. uh, I work even more than before. And yeah, I still deliver uh, musical content. Uh, we write music, we work on, uh, on stuff. But at the same time, we, uh, we find a different way to stay in touch with the fans, to entertain them. And they are supportive. Yeah, yeah sure. Sure. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm really confident. I really hope that, uh, yeah, after this, uh, there's going to be, yeah, maybe it's not going to be like before, but, but uh, maybe it, it slowly, you know, grow again and in a better way. Uh, I hope that we are going to learn something from all this, you know, yeah. in general. I think for sure people are going to appreciate freedom and being able to go to gigs a lot more then, you know, absolutely things that you have taken for granted before that you can't do now. Like, um, like me and my wife uh, love to go scuba diving. And uh, now we mm -hmm. just, uh, we had like a lot of plans for this year, but we places we were going to go and uh, nah, all, all canceled. So like things like that, okay. I'm going to, I am for sure going to appreciate them a lot more once these restrictions are gone. Mm -hmm. So uh, where, where, where's the, the last place you've been scuba diving? Uh, last place was after the, uh, we played on the 70,000 tons of metal. Mm -hmm. And it, it, that went to, it went to Cozumel. Mexico. Yeah, to Cozumel in Mexico. And we, we dived there. But, uh, awesome. Uh, I've done quite a quite a bit of diving in Mexico in the caves there around uh, the Yucatan near uh, Tulum and Cancun. There's quite a lot of really okay. amazing caves. It's diving. in the cenot in the cenotes or yes. yeah yeah scuba diving. Wow yeah. wow wow yeah so pretty awesome. spectacular diving there. But yeah, super cool. After the after the <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> After the lockdown, yeah, yeah, this, I'm, I'm, I'm dying as well. I, I really love to go to mountains, and uh, now you know we have no option to to reach the mountains. It's uh, somehow, oh, sometimes it can be even uh, even a little bit dangerous. So we have to try to stay away from dangerous activity. At least now that all the ERs are super <laughs> full. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. So, yeah, yeah, we have to contribute in this in this way. And also, I've seen on your uh, on your page that you are a professional pranker. I, I've seen a picture some days ago. You are you are uh, uh, saying that you are pranking Nergal or something during one of the last tours that you've <laughs> been in. Uh, so, I, are you a professional pranker? <laughs> I, I I love doing pranks. I'm I, you know like uh, I'm a lot calmer these days. Because um, mm -hmm. just because uh, maybe you care, I care more about other people's feelings. But <laughs> there's been like <laughs> we like when when I was in Cradle, there was some really really terrible stuff going on. We had this. Uh, <laughs> I bought this uh, tr it, it, when we were touring in the states. I bought a trucker alarm, like a, a wake up alarm for the trucker. And it was okay. 110 decibel, and I, I hit it. <laughs> I put it, put it on the timer, and put it in our singer's bed, not in Danny's bed, wow. in Sarah's bed, and she came flying uh -huh. out of the bed. 
it's just, <laughs> it's, it seems seems pretty pretty late, but there's a, like um, we had this. Uh, remember a band called God Forbid? Mm-hmm. Do, you rem- do you remember them? We had them anyway. We had them on God tour. God Forbid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah God on, Forbid. I know that. Yeah. We had them on tour in America, and they were uh, they had just arrived on tour, and the drummer was sound checking. We hadn't said hello or anything yet, and uh, we were filming uh, uh, filming uh, background stuff to for our DVD. And I asked my drum tech, "Film me now." I go up, and I went up to the guy and, "Dude, your snare doesn't sound right." And I go, <laughs> get, get, "Give me a stick," and I was tapping his stick. Tap in the snare, dude, dude. It sounds like shit. And then I had this carpet knife and just cut the entire <laughs> snare head in front of him. <laughs> and, and he's just, we, we got him on video with the face just dropped. Obviously, we had a fresh, <laughs> we had a fresh snare head immediately for him. But, uh, like, yeah, yeah. And, but you know, one of the reasons I sort of stopped doing a lot of uh, the pranks is that, like, I don't like it when it happens back to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Like, I know. Yeah. I'm a I'm a pranker as well, and uh, yeah, when it happens, when they they give you they they backfire, you know. As uh... yeah, I, like when I was in Paradise Lost, they backfired really terribly. I I text. We would we'd sit up and drunk beer afterwards, and late in the mor- like early morning, I texted the manager. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's gone really horribly wrong on tour. Me and Nick had a fight, and like uh, <laughs> you know, like uh, I'm uh, I'm out of the band basically, and uh, oh and uh, I've done this uh, like say, similar text to, to the manager before. So they decide they decided to play it back on me. So when I got up really hungover the next day, I got in the venue. No one in the band said a word to me. And the man, tour manager said, Adrian, come here. We have to speak to you. And I was you know, really nervous and shaking and stuff. And I said, uh, right, uh, Jeff Singer's coming cam- coming back. You, you've basically been sent home. So I've been asked to, to present you some flying times. So you're going to go home, basically. And I said, yeah. dude, it was a joke. But <laughs> well, the manager doesn't care. You're going home. And they no kept way. it up. For, they kept it up for hours. You know, they they held back the sound check, and uh, so there was no sound check. And I was just there, like thinking, okay, I've been kicked out the band. No one in the band is talking to me anymore. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it, it backfired. Wow. And uh, yeah, so I've been. Uh, I calmed down a little bit. I did a few pranks on there, gal, but uh, I'm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you're mentioning every every time you, you tell a story, you mention a great band you've been in, like uh, Paradise Lost. Uh, seen, um, you recorded the Ball Empire also, and there was a guy asking uh, who was uh, which one was the the most difficult album to record with The Haunted, which is another band I really love. With The Haunted, uh, the Haunted yeah, uh, probably the the debut album. The, the f- very first album, because uh, I was working full time uh, for a computer company in Gothenburg. And okay. I said, uh, um, as you know, I'm in a band and I need some time off to record the album. We booked studio time. And my boss said, basically, you, you can't have, take time off for this. So I had to, I was working like 96. And then I got to the studio maybe at seven and start recording maybe at eight, record till like one in the morning, then travel mm-hmm. home. And then, so like I was recording in the evenings and uh, that was really super tough. Super tough stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. All, also then uh, that was, uh, you know, that was uh, to tape. So there was no editing or fixing anything afterwards so like if it did if it sounded shit when you recorded it like you couldn't move mm-hmm. the bass drums around for example or move the snare yeah. or change the fill or anything like that so um yeah that that's probably the toughest album with the haunted mm-hmm. so there, here's a very tricky question uh, yeah. you are you you can answer not uh, uh but uh, i thought yes it's a, a cool one but um how would you compare both band leaders, Danny and Thomas? 
<laughs> it's because, a, uh, it's it's a tricky one because they, you know they always uh, you know maybe they think that there, there will be some beef or stuff like that you know but uh, sometimes it's just uh, you know the, I the, sometimes people have a wrong perception that um, of how it works between musicians in a band you know some, yeah. some sometimes it's way easier than how they think it is. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's a main, there's a very big difference between uh, Thomas and Danny in that uh, Cradle is Danny's band. Mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, with At The Gates, it, like, it, it's our band together. And, yes, uh, you know, to Thomas, Thomas, he's the singer and, yeah, he writes, like, all the lyrics and he does most of the interviews, but, you know, he's... Uh, I'm hoping he's not watching now, <laughs> but but uh, yeah, he's he's he doesn't see himself as a leader, you know. Like he's he's we have a. Like, he's very uh, he is a, he is a very charismatic, yeah, musician, very charismatic yeah. singer, and uh, but yeah, and I think it, that is what makes him a leader in the live situation, but in the band, sure. you know. Yeah. Sure, I mean, it. it I think it's. Uh, and that is totally fine uh, for the singer to take that role, but uh, like he he is not like that uh, privately. Mm -hmm. And uh, like uh, when we are hanging out, everyone's equal. So it's you know that isn't the case. And even when we're hanging out with Cradle, that wasn't the case either. It, I mean, okay, Danny and the manager made like most of the decisions, and mm -hmm. you know. There was a bit of a democ democracy going on, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, like everyone was uh, in on the fact that it's it's kind of Danny's band, you know. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. So I really hope that this uh, answer, you know, is enough. It made uh, a shitload of questions, but I cannot even uh, keep track of the, all the questions because they are going super fast, and there's a uh, a lot of Mazami. This guy is a uh, is a sweetheart. Uh, is a uh, is a guy that we, that a friend of us from Japan, and mm -hmm. uh, he's saying yes. Yeah, Slaughter of Soul uh, was released twenty years ago, and uh, everyone is. Uh, I was looking forward to being able to celebrate the twenty fifth anniversary at the Download Japan Fest this year. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Good. that was uh, one of the first shows actually that got cancelled because yeah. uh, that was that was scheduled to be at the end of March, I think. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we've been uh, lucky. We we've, we've been last year. We've been in Japan for the last time, and mm -hmm. we did like Asia, Australia. So we've been lucky. Then we we just had to cancel the America tour two weeks before we were, you know, we we're supposed to be on tour. Uh, right, yeah. We're supposed to be in April. So yeah, but Japan, I, we made I, it. <laughs> I I follow um, Eugene, the guy that uh, your uh, yeah, new yeah. live drummer. And I, I was uh, looking forward to seeing videos uh, with him playing your stuff live. As a, he's an incredible man. It's yeah. so good, so good. Much better than me. <laughs> and uh, there's no sweat. You see no, him no, playing, no. and he's not sweating yeah, a, even. Uh, man, uh, how is it possible? It's a, it's a fucking machine. I mean, like, it's a it, when uh, when we when we practice, we practice in my my house, and uh, I have this kind of like studio thing. is like like a small room, but we practice here. And it was like, okay, Eugene, you learn the songs, and then you fly here, and we practice a little bit together. And uh, he came, and it, it knew you were. He was nailing the songs very well. We had like very minor issues to fix here and there. And he was performing like many times, and I was like, "Man, I, I play guitar, but I feel tired for you, man." <laughs> I was like, How is that possible? Back in the days when we were practicing, we were going through a set, and, and then I was like, "Ah, oh, I'm done. I, I go home." You know? yeah, yeah. For him, it's a different. It's a different thing. You know, he's younger. Yeah. Maybe that's the secret. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't you know, know I, I think there's a new, there's a totally a new school of drummers that uh, yes. have uh, like really perfect technique and you use minimum effort when they're playing 
and uh, it's I find it really fascinating to to watch them. It's just you know. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's incredible. Yeah, I, I feel that, uh, but I feel like uh, much old school in this way. I mean. Yeah, technique uh, has been essential, and um, I don't want to say that it wasn't important for us because uh, mm-hmm. it led us to to reach things that uh, m- made our you know credibility, and uh, you know we we built a fan base out of it at the very beginning. But mm. it's it wasn't the point. Yeah. So I say that I belong more to the old school, you know, musician. You know, it's more about the music itself and not yeah. about the technique. But of course, of course, uh, these new guys are impressive, you know, like yeah. some of this. Yeah, it's uh, it's unbelievable. And he is one of the of uh, of the best now. Uh, I uh, and also a super cool dude. Yeah. So it's good for us to have him in. All right. So uh, can we get a flash to adapt the gates US tour? Hopefully. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> Maybe, maybe in the future. I would love to to go and do it with you guys. Yeah, that could, I think that, that could be, be a cool package. Super cool, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. And um, well, I had uh, some other, you know, question for you, but I don't know. I don't want to bother. It's already 50 minutes <laughs> that we are together. Let's, uh, let's, yeah. That's I, cool. Like, that's cool. I'm not in yeah, a rush. Super nice, man. man. Super nice. Thank you very much. So this one is uh, this is from me. Okay, uh, uh, who were you know, the, the the most influential drummers for you at the very beginning? When when I first started playing, it was um, I'd say uh, Dave Holland from Judas Priest, um, Phil Rudd from ACDC, Tommy Lee. Uh, Rick Allen from Rick Allen from Def Leppard, Def Leppard when he had two arms, even when he had one arm. I think you know. Yes. Like, a lo- it's funny because like a lot of people, they really slag off Rick Allen, but you know he was he was the forefather of like digital drumming. Like yeah. uh, when they when he came back with one arm. Like his pedal setup, he's got like parts of fills on. On he's got something like ten pedals, and he's got like parts of fills, and it, unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, yeah, yeah, so he was a, a big influence. But later, obviously, when um, when I was getting into heavier music, uh, I'd say like uh, Dave Lombardo, Pete Sandoval. Uh, uh, a guy that doesn't get mentioned so often, Dave Calros, that played for Malevolent Creation for a while. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dave Calros, I know him. Yeah, inc- incredible drummer. And uh, incredible. Doc, Doc from Vader, like uh, first Vader Doc drummer. Vader. Yeah, and um, uh, that that thing yeah. that uh, when they were like the, the profundis or when they uh, when I heard the wings. For the first time, yeah, from Doc. That's mental. The thing was, yeah, it was mental. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I, we've been touring with uh, with Vader uh, back in the days in 2009. Uh, we toured with Vader. It was actually uh, one of the first tours we were doing, and uh, and uh, I was asking to Peter. I was like, you know, Doc is a. Uh, it, it, it was uh, in, like an incredible drama, you know. How, how did it work when you were recording this stuff? It's like, you know, it, it was totally mental. He recorded the, the, the whole album in a few hours. You know, it was like going there, playing, and I was like, after a few hours, the album was done. And I was like, wow. <laughs> you know, for me, it was like, no, it, it takes a shit lot of time, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's great. Great drummer, yeah. Yeah, Pete Sandoval is amazing. A lot of people, Dave Lombardo, of course. Yeah. O- also, um, uh, uh, um, Chris Reifert from Autopsy and Death. Yeah. And Bill Andrews, that was all in Massacre and Death, where they were big influences. They still, still, when we're writing stuff, like, for example, uh, with uh, Lurking Fear. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we wrote the Lurk and Fear album, uh, we were going like, oh, should we have like, uh, um, it, it, 
what kind of style drumming should we have on this song? Oh, uh, like think about Mike Browning, uh, Nocturnus and early Morbid Angel. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, think about him for the intro and for the, uh, for the rest of the song, Chris Reifert and maybe Steep and from Merciless on the, on the end. So that's the kind of guy. Yes, you are just some mixing styles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. So, so um, yeah. And the, I mean, this this guy still influenced me. Like, uh, if I feel like I'm uh, stuck in a bit of a hole, you know, I, I put like one of those old albums on it, like play along and then, ah. It's, yeah, that's, like, it's, it's crazy because this happens to me with you. <laughs> it's like, a, it's like a, and now we, we need uh, we need some like we need some etiquette here like a, it's like a tupa, 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 tupa. we need it <laughs> and it's like okay yeah no, so it's yeah yeah there's a lot of uh, we etiquetting the songs as much as we can <laughs> <laughs> that's great one crazy okay. yeah Infer inferno of behemoth is uh, is unbelievable so he has he has this uh, super personal style but uh, it's super tight super cool. Yeah. So super. I don't know him personally. I spoke to him like once. He's a very shy guy. He's, uh, yeah. I think, silent. Um, we we did two tours with him for uh, where, um, in the last touring cycle, and uh, like a, mm -hmm. he's they're all really nice. All all of the crew super nice and super supportive. Like for example, uh, like if the stage was too small to have a kit in front. The, mm -hmm. They would say, uh, you can play on Inferno's kit. So yeah, that, which is great. Yeah, of course, uh, uh, his kit is very different to me. Uh, with like, <laughs> yeah. really, really high cymbals and like a lot of toms. And and mm -hmm. you'd, I didn't want to change anything or move anything around. So like I had to really concentrate to play on his kit. But uh, just to see, uh, illustrate how supportive they were when... We played in um, in Tampere in in Finland, and uh, I broke the link of my Charlie Copito pedal. It it just broke off, and the um, that's the bass drum pedal for the ones that don't know the, the yeah, name. Of, the, the, yeah, it's so, like a piece of the drum pedal in between, like yeah, it's drum and, transmission. And, yeah, that's right. And that broke, and I didn't have a spare, and uh, like there was no other possibility to play the the first band wolves in the throne room their drummer is left-handed so he had a left-handed pedal so that wasn't possible yeah. either so then in the middle of our set they said okay you move to inferno's drums so they moved me to inferno's drums and they took my drums away and they waited and they said just finish your set on inferno's kit so Fantastic. I mean, like a lot, a lot of bands would not do that. Yeah, that would be the end of your set, basically. But uh, yes, yeah, yes. they said just you know take the time you need, set up and uh, play, finish the set, and we did. Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I absolutely. I'm like. I know they are super cool guys and um, and uh, they are super professional and um, you know usually the really great artists are, are never pieces of shit you know like it's yeah. uh, they always have like yeah usually uh, dickheads are always people that are insecure of what they're doing they are not you know enough uh, solid probably so yeah. it's uh, yeah it, this is uh, and they feel. A kind of like like a kind of competition, and that's not uh, it's not the case most of the time. So yeah, yeah no, for sure, it's, uh, it's weird. It's uh, sometimes you know, uh, it is uh, yeah, it's behind the scenes is uh, is very weird sometimes. <laughs> uh, you know, when you go into it, this uh, some bands that are so uh, competitive somehow, yeah. you know, and uh, it's. But I've been we we've been uh, very lucky, honestly. We always been on tour with uh, bigger bands that treated us very well, so we were very very lucky. And we try when we at line, uh, we try always to give uh, room and to to support the bands that that 
you know that helped to to to, to the to the to the evening to the show to happen you know it's like yeah. you're not yeah so uh did you <laughs> this guy did you have to wear the, uh, the inferno's huge boots <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> i don't know how at least i don't know how he can play in those boots i don't know i have no idea it's so amazing Yes, he, is, yeah. He said he learned to play with boots like that, and now he has to have them. So okay. This Adrian, do you have a death metal nickname? What does it mean? I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> no, we, yeah. In death metal, we use our names. You know, it's more like a black metal thing. You know. Uh, have you ever been into black metal, like proper black metal, or...? I mean, I, I played with Niflheim for a while. Um, yeah. But, I mean, you know, black metal, uh, I kind of... Uh, black metal uh, these days, that when it, it, like symphonic black metal, I, I'm kind of more like a heavy, a heavy metal guy, to be, to be honest. And yeah, uh, yeah. like, yeah, of course, I I played in a black metal band for many years with mm -hmm. with Cradle. But you know, like when we were in the bus, we we're listening to Saxon or Iron Maiden or Motorhead. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, yeah. So I mean, I don't know. There's a lot. There is a big connection between the heavy metal world and the black metal world. Yeah. Like it's musical wise, you know. I think, uh, like. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm probably more of a thrash death metal uh, fan than I am a black metal fan, to be honest. But like, of course, it, like there are good new black metal that I that I really like. For example, uh, Nordjävel from Norway, Sweden. I really like their stuff. I don't know if they want to call themselves black metal, but I like yeah. the early early Dark Throne. It's killer. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Okay. So this guy is Corpse Grinder, his real name. Yeah, I know him uh, personally, and I can tell you that this is his real name. <laughs> I've so got, it's, I've, it's, it's not a nickname. <laughs> I've got a killer Corpse Grinder story. Okay, <laughs> come on. Uh, we, were in, uh, we were on tour, and um, like Robin, uh, that uh, sells merchandise for us, uh, she's good friends with... Uh, uh, George and his wife, and uh, they okay. came. To, they came to the show, and uh, she'd baked cookies and uh, uh, like cupcakes, Mrs. Corp, uh, okay. Mrs. Corpse Grinder, and uh, left them on the bus with a little thank you note to, to us. <laughs> so we, we came off stage, and they had already left, and uh, okay. eating uh, like Corpse Grinders cookies on the bus. I thought that. <laughs> <they're> just, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought that was pretty funny. We were laughing about it, but they were really tasty, really tasty cupcakes and uh, chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. Also, you are a big, uh, big fan of uh, of chips. I've seen uh, tutorials so how to dip chips. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's just the uh, really silly stuff, you know. You get up to, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely more into salty and uh, spicy stuff than sweet stuff. Even though I like cakes as well. Okay. All right. Mm. Okay. So it's uh, it's seven five. It's a lot, man, that we are discussing. So we can, uh, yeah. It's been a, it's been a great time with you, man. You are very uh, sweeter. You're a special man. I love Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank you. Um, we have uh, we have uh, another another guest coming. And uh, so we can let you go. Uh, is uh, is uh, the singer of a band, uh, a French band. Uh, the, the band is called Benighted, and uh, the singer is called Julian. Okay. So uh, yeah, he's gonna. We're gonna hug him, and we're gonna say goodbye all together. Okay. Okay. And then I'm gonna write you a message later. And, okay. Um, Sweet. And yeah, and the, the super. Uh, cool story is super cool. It's not a cool story, but the, the super. Hey, Julian, can you hey, see hey us? Guys. How are you? 
Very well. I don't see you. Maybe later I'm going to see you. I don't know. Let me check. Normally. Yeah, I can see him. Okay. I can yeah. see his hand. Nice no, I can see his face. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, Francesco. Oh. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm fine. A bit, a bit tired. I just arrived from work, so I just had time to shower, drink a drink a glass of wine, and here I am. Okay, cool. Yeah, the the the, the story is that this guy got the coronavirus. Oh so, yeah. Uh, yeah, he got it, and uh, because you you work in a hospital, right? Yeah, yeah. Normally, I'm I'm used to work in a psychiatric hospital, but uh, with all the patient uh, who got the coronavirus. I uh, went to the general medical department to to give a hand, and uh, unfortunately, I caught this shit, <laughs> and it's no, very, wow. very bad. <laughs> did you did you get it bad? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, actually, I, I I'm never sick. I'm almost never sick, and uh, I spend the whole week uh, with a uh, high fever between uh, 39 and 41, and uh, I felt wow. like really I was I, I felt really bad like. Uh, like in danger, you know. Sometimes I went to bed yeah. asking myself if I would be there the day after. So it was, it was not a very good time. But yeah. uh, I, I got antibiotics, and uh, it helps the, the lung infection. And uh, it took something like eight or nine days to to get healthy again and be able to talk without coughing like a grandpa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, but wow. now you are negative, right? What? Now you're negative to the tampon or? Normally, normally, yeah. I'm still very careful because we don't know a lot of things about this shitty virus. So we are still careful uh, mm. because uh, we are supposed to be immune once we recovered. But there are several cases of uh, people who got sick twice. So I'm, I'm very careful about my yeah. family. and so I don't see anyone until I stop working in this department. Okay, cool. So we, we we spent uh, we spent an hour together with Adrian. Yeah, I see. <laughs> you, you see it? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. For, for me, it's uh, kind of uh, a dream coming true, man. <laughs> it's uh, super cool. It's an honor to talk to you, Adrian. You're you're an amazing drummer, and I'm a oh, huge fan you. of Adrian Gates and Beyond it. So uh, it's nice. a pleasure thank to you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Also, he has the best chair. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this! Uh, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a boss chair, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a very, you know, le legendary chair for a legendary musician. <laughs> Definitely. My wife, my wife has good taste. I can say yeah. that. So, all right. So, uh, thank, thank you very much for for being with us, and uh, you know, I love you, man. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for much. having me. You let's are arrange, let's again. Arrange you are tour you're a legend. The, uh, you're a legend. Let's arrange that tour when uh, the restriction is lifted. Let's make it happen, man. For sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank cool. you very much. Take care. Nice to meet you, yeah, Julian. Yeah. The same. Yeah. Cheers. Ready. Goodbye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Goodbye, Adrian. Bye. All right. All right. So you're doing better, Julian. Uh, yeah, I'm doing better. I, sta I started working again. Uh, started working again on Wednesday, so I, I'm st I'm still a bit tired. I'm not 100 percent now, but I'm I'm okay enough to work, and I uh, I sleep like a baby, so it's perfect. Okay, cool, awesome. So what what's going on in your New York camp? What, what what happened to? Did you have like you have tours, recording, uh, maybe like a practice stuff, you know, let's people know this guy is the singer of uh, Benighted, which is a French uh, death metal grind, early, in early days, black metal. So you experimented a lot, man. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of, actually, I would say that basically we are, we play death metal, but yeah, we have a lot of grindcore influence and black metal and hardcore and, uh, and everything, yeah. Well, so did you, well, how, how, did, how did all this affected your plans? Did you have uh, shows booked or stuff like that? Uh, well, I guess that uh, we, we we just have a new album released uh, two weeks ago, and I think that was the worst way to have a, a, a new album. We we had a lot of yeah. shows. Of course, everything is cancelled, and instead of playing uh, Inferno Festival in Norway 
the very day of the release of the album, I was in my bed. <laughs> I was in my bed with 45 fevers, uh, with uh, yeah. 40 degrees fever. So it was it was definitely not the best way to release an album. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah. So uh, well, it was uh, especially because of you because you got the, the virus. You know, it's like. Uh, unbelievable you know like especially how would you describe it you know it's so so scary <laughs> actually yeah the thing is that it apparently it's very different from from one person to another i guess i was i was pretty tired because i i have also, of course all the all the disappointment about everything getting cancelled and uh yeah. it was pretty hard for me to go back to general medical department because i'm used to work in psychiatry for uh, 18 years now so For, for me, it was a huge mm -hmm. challenge to go back in this kind of, uh, of department. And uh, I probably ca caught the virus with patients that were not diagnosed yet because normally we have very good protection. And uh, just before my department got COVID department, uh, I, I, I had to take care of patients that afterwards uh, appeared to be uh, positive to the COVID. So I probably got it there. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah. Uh, it is, <laughs> it is a very tough moment. Yeah, <laughs> because you're you're all alone. You have high fever, headache. You you lose the sense of taste and smell. Which mm -hmm. for did you recover? Like, did did you recover that? Yeah, already? yeah. Fortunately, yeah, because I was so sad because my only pleasure at home, as I don't see anyone, not to contaminate anyone, my only pleasure at home was to eat. <laughs> and when. when <laughs> When you don't feel the taste anymore, you really have nothing left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, it's a, it's like a, a involuntary diet then, because you yeah. start, you know. But it's also dangerous because you don't, you start, you know, you still have to eat something, you know. And when you don't have taste anymore and you are not in the mood, you know, of eating, you know, it becomes dangerous, you know. So you have to force yourself to do it. And, yeah. Uh, Yeah, I I lost five kilos in a, in a, uh, during the week, but it's it's good. I I have some left, but I, I lost <laughs> five fucking kilos in a week. So. Five fucking kilos in a week. What are you drinking? What? What are you drinking? Now I'm drinking red wine. Yeah, but because what, what, which because red I'm wine? <laughs> it's called Corbière. It's a it's a wine from the southwest of France. That's mm -hmm. very good with uh, duck meat or something like that. It's very good. Okay, but it, well, actually, where are you from in France? Which city? Uh, I live. I live one hour on the west side of Lyon. Okay, so in the in the center, more or less. Uh, yeah, in, in, right in the middle, in the in the center of France. Yeah, but in a very small village with uh, the nicest name you can find. It's called Miserieux. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> when, yeah. I invite people, when I invite people to my place, they are always very suspicious about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's cool to yeah, it's cool to to live in uh, in the countryside. I live in the countryside too, and uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, all this disaster affected uh, the countryside a little bit less than the mm, than the, you know the cities, and uh, of course because of you know people concentration and stuff like that. But still. Uh, and also now that we are going to be allowed, maybe, maybe I say, we're going to be allowed to go out once again, you know, where we have like, uh, cool places to go and, uh, yeah. we had the opportunity. When, yeah. do, do, you, do you already have a, a date for, uh, for, uh, lo lockdown to hand? Uh, okay. We have, uh, we, the, the 4th of May should be the first day in which we are allowed to leave our places uh, with uh, like all the uh, precautions like mask and uh, social distancing and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to be allowed to enter uh, small shops one by one. Uh, all the restaurants and bar venues, whatever is going to be, they're, they're going to keep those activities closed. And uh, as much as all the, Uh, costs and stuff like that. There, not not much is gonna open uh, till maybe June, July. I don't know. Uh, the good thing for us, uh, as a, in our region, is that we don't have many cases, so uh, it's gonna be kind of safe to go out anyway. 
uh, and uh, so it's going to be one of the first regions that they are going to have more uh, services and activities going. Perfect. It's going to be a little bit tougher, uh, unfortunately, for the north, uh, like uh, all the Milan area where we have a lot of uh, people dying still every day. So th those, are, those areas are going to be uh, locked down uh, for a little bit longer, but still. You know, no, we have to be patient. There's not much we can do now. No, we have to be able to stay optimistic, like uh, like positive, staying up positive as much as we can. Of course, positive. We have to stay positive. I was COVID positive, so I can't be more positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was a bad joke, man. <laughs> but, I, but I got it. I have a right to do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you absolutely, man. So, uh, what are you guys uh, doing now to keep the band alive? Uh, well, we are we are doing as much as we can the, the promotion of the new album uh, on the internet, and we are discussing about uh, making new tracks to not, not tracks for an album or something, but maybe some tracks that we can put on the internet and uh, give the money to uh, to venues of friends uh, which are in a high difficulty financially talking, and uh, awesome. we, we we try to imagine um, to imagine everything we can to. To help the people who are actually normally uh, help us in our nowadays life, you know, like uh, the bar that you're going to, the venue that makes you play every year, and uh, they are yeah. all in a very, very difficult situation. So we are trying to fix everything we can and think about how we can help them financially. And that, that's what we are do doing right now, uh, along with uh, the album promotion that we continue to do, uh, waiting for, uh, for playing this, uh, this fucking new song. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's what that's what we're busy with nowadays. Yeah. All right. So you have a, you have a, uh, a, a official merch store, or you have links where we can purchase. Uh, you can you know promoting. Uh, you can promote uh, uh, and uh, you know give some links to the people to uh, to go check and to purchase the album, or to purchase the album stuff like that, like an official store or. Yeah, no, no, for now, the easiest way is to uh, to go on the Season of Mist shop. That's the, Season that's of Mist shop. Yeah, but it's the easiest way because they can ship fast because uh, normally I do the shipment myself. But okay. uh, with, with the lockdown and with, uh, with uh, all the work I've got to do, I, I don't have time for that at all. So I, uh, I, I let yeah. Season of Mist do the job and that's good like that. Okay, so yeah, you so people... That wants to uh, purchase the new album and uh, you want to help the band uh, buying through buying merchandise, whatever. You just go to the Season of Mist uh, yeah. shop and uh, yeah, you you get the new Benade album. And uh, yeah, so you're gonna record at home. Uh, I, was, I know that your drummer is always recording stuff. <laughs> you guys have a killer drummer. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I was so impressed. Like. When I've seen him in Gotham, I, I was there with David, uh, the guy that was performing drums for us uh, before Eugene. And uh, uh, and we were there and we were watching at him and it was so cool, you know, to watch Kevin play. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's really a war machine. Yeah. But the funny thing is that we, we already discussed about, uh, with, with Eugene, about him, him playing in Benighted uh, some, some years ago. <laughs> Eugene. Yeah, yeah, so I, I was I was so happy when he told me that he was playing with you guys. When, when, I think we were partying in Vienna together because we, we had a show there and he was there with his brother. And uh, mm -hmm. we, 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 we got very, very drunk during the after party. And for the record, <laughs> Kevin brought this uh, Lucifer chocolate. We said, you know, yeah. this thing that you can say is the spiciest chocolate in the world or something like that. You, you eat just... I uh, never tried that. Yeah. You did you didn't try to and I've got videos about it and he, he must keep a very bad memory about it. All right, send me send me the videos. It will yeah, I will. It, it was yes. super I'm funny. Gonna, play, was, I'm gonna blackmail him. Yeah, actually he was he was too drunk and he took it too, <laughs> it was really too much big piece. <laughs> really. <laughs> I, I will send oh, it to wow. you. Awesome. All right, so you know, I'm a, I'm from an, an area where uh, you know we make a very good wine, so you should come yeah. visit. Yeah, 
we are oh, we live very close to Montefalco, which is uh, like a very a medieval village where they have a lot of uh, fields and a lot of famous canteens. Yeah. So there's not much going on here, but we have a good wine and good olive oil. <laughs> it's that's where what we get. So it's, it's enough, so right? It's enough. Yeah, and, and that's metal. And that's metal. Uh, all right. So uh, there's people writing um, uh, how uh, and how is the better, probably is asking, this guy is asking, who is the best guitar player in history of metal? You're asking that to a singer, and I don't know <laughs> the instruments, so I have no fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I'm a singer. I'm not a musician at all. I just do my awful uh, screams and growls and everything, and I try to do this in time. But don't talk to me about music. I'm very, very bad about it. <laughs> yeah, but at least he's honest. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you guys plan to re-release the first Binari album? Uh, we actually we we never we never talked about re-releasing it. I think it's sold out for years now. I, I have no idea. If I, I think I, I must have one at my place, but uh, yeah, I think it's totally unfindable now. So we we never thought about re-releasing it. We, we we will we will see. I don't know. It, it it's such an old album and uh, it's <laughs> it's so badly recorded. <laughs> yeah, no, I have no, no idea. I have always said this, you know, but the fans don't care. It's uh, for, for for the people, you know, it's a totally different. It's as as soon as you release something, it's not yours anymore. Of course, There's of course. A plenty of stuff that they wanted to re-record, and I, I'm always complaining with the other guys. Oh, we should have done this. We should have done that. You know, this sound shitty. This uh, we should have done this video this way. So I'm, I'm always complaining. Always, uh, and uh, uh, unfortunately, never happy. You know, it's like uh, we, uh, you always see something uh, from your perspective. Perspective, but as soon as you release it, it's not yours anymore. So even if it sounds shitty, looks shitty, whatever, becomes important for somebody, then it makes sense to re-release it anyway. <laughs> so yeah, it's not it's, impossible. Uh, it's not impossible that we do that. Uh, we will see, but we have other things in mind for now, so we will see, maybe. Are you a trained vocalist? Ah, uh, well, I almost never practice myself. I, uh, the, the, only, the only moments where I take time to rehearse is before the tours to get my voice, you know, used to, to sing every night. And I think that's the only thing I do. I, well, I, I always try to find some new ways of uh, pushing my throat and some new kinds of, uh, of vocals. So when I want to find another one, the, the best uh, place I do that is in my car when I'm driving. So I'm all alone. I can do that as loud as I can. And uh, I don't care about being ridiculous, except maybe from people that cross my way. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, I know I, I don't they train don't a know. lot. They just don't know that then you're going to unleash L on stage. <laughs> Yeah, they look at you like yeah, uh, yeah. Sometimes I have this. Uh, I have this when I go like, uh, like maybe uh, I just go to, to, uh, to. The, the, I have a kid and uh, I go to the school to 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 pick him up and um, maybe I'm wearing like uh, a death metal T-shirt with a you know with a very weird log or whatever you know and I'm see see all the other parents looking at me like oh this guy you know then they yeah. they just don't know and maybe. Two days after you are at, you know, performing Hellfest, you know, in front of 10,000 people, you know, <laughs> that, that's great to, that's great to play like uh, really unknown music because you are like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. when you, yeah, they, they watch you like, oh, the, look at this idiot, he's shouting in the car and after two days you are, you know, unleashing gala at the Inferno Festival, you know, in Norway, you know, it's, that's great. Yeah, that's great. But yeah, people cannot imagine what it is to be in a in a metal band that succeeded a bit and to to experience all the great things that we do. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. They cannot imagine. They laugh at us, but in the end, maybe we are kind of living the dream of uh, you know do whatever we like in total freedom. You know, if 
Absolutely. Yeah. I I agree 100 percent Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. So it's uh wow. Well, five minutes to go. So it's time flies, you know. When I started doing this, I was like super scared of okay, you prepare one thousand <laughs> shit and whatever, you know, like and then all of, every time, you know, it it goes so fast, time flies for real. Uh, it's only both of, it's good. It, sh- it shows that you it's not, it's not boring, so that's a very good thing. <laughs> I, I, for real, I, I'm very lucky. I, I I'm very lucky to to know uh, a lot of musicians that are so cool and so uh, you know empathic and you know they have so, everyone that uh, that uh, was here uh, from the episode number one was so uh, they had a lot of things to 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 tell people to they everyone has a talent for entertaining and that's that's a great thing so it it was very easy for real you know for me it's a total new thing and uh the the the, the guests that i had uh, so far helped me a lot in this new uh, chapter so, yeah, which is a totally good, a great idea yeah all right only vocals in car are real okay uh all right so um julian what is your favorite singer or band Ah, my favorite singer. Uh, that's, uh, the thing is that I really love uh, Travis from Cattle Decapitation because mm-hmm. of all the variations he can do with his vocals because I really like the singers that can do many things with their vocals. And uh, of course, one of my favorite singers is also my, my brother Sven from Aborted because uh, yeah. for me, it's one of the best live performers I've ever seen. I, a uh, singer that can have such a great vocals and uh, move like he, like he's doing on stage for me it's really it's really incredible for me it's one of the best singer on stage because i i, I don't think that um, many singers can uh, can do the job he does on stage moving like he does and giving all the energy he does absolutely so, absolutely yeah. unbelievable yeah i agree i, I when i've seen him uh, for the first time i was blown away man yeah, yeah, but he's, he's really impressive. He's very calm beside the stage, you know, very calm guy. And when he goes on stage, it's like, whoa, the beast yeah. is on leave. That's it. it, was, it was, uh, once we played that, uh, that feast uh, together, I think I was in our penance, and it, yeah. was, uh, it was doing double duty because it was playing drums in Lang Chat. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, it's and a long time. Was, uh, and after, yeah, and after, uh, what? It, it's a long time ago. <laughs> Better not to say. I think over ten years ago, like two thousand eight, maybe two thousand eight or seven or eight or nine, maybe. I don't remember. Two thousand eight, maybe. It was a long time ago. Yeah, but he's a very yeah. talented guy. It's it's like you. I really don't get. I really don't like the guys who can do everything. You know, play drums, play guitar, sing. I really hate you guys. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of time to waste. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that explains everything. Yeah, a lot of people always up to cut off decapitation, you know, to uh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask David uh, the drummer if he wants to join us in one of the next episodes. He's a super cool dude. Uh he lives in uh, actually lives in Seattle, which is uh one of the worst area in the United States for the COVID. Yeah. Yeah. He lives. Um, I, I met once in uh, uh, once I met him in Seattle. Uh, I think it's uh, from San Diego, something like that. Or Maybe. it was in where's from here? Yeah. West Coast, though. Uh, for me, SNL is not as much as about question and answer, but about the stories you guys share with us. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, this is the purpose, you know, to, you know, try to uh, give you a different view of the musicians, you know, they mm-hmm. they don't know us like uh, in a personal life, and uh, we give you like uh, backstage stories, stuff like that. So it's super cool to share this stuff with you guys as well, because you know, it's we we enjoy we enjoyed life so much so far, and we really hope to go back 
on doing what we like to do as soon as possible, but we want to share all those all, all these experiences that we had together. So that was great. That's great. Uh, does Julian like to fight club? To fight club? Yeah, I don't know. This is uh, yeah. maybe He's super weird. Is talking about the movie, or is he asking me oh, if okay. I like to fight? <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> All right. So, I, I really like the movie, and I, I stopped fighting since uh, since I uh, stopped playing rugby. So, you're a rugby rugby player? Yeah, I played rugby for 17 years. Wow. So, so that's why my back is totally fucked up now, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I have a lot of sores everywhere. <laughs> really? But well. But I, th I think it's. Uh, did, did you did you do like uh, professionally? You played a lot of like no, 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 very no, no, high no, level. Yeah, no, no, totally amateur. I think it was in the um, uh, in the middle level of France, what you can call. You know, it's not it's not very bad. It's not very good. It's right in the middle. But it it was enough because uh, for me, uh, I couldn't train that much, also because of the band. And uh, I spent so many weekends, you know, like uh, playing with Benighted on Saturday night. And then waking wake everyone up uh, at six in the morning and say, "Hey, let's go, let's go to the van because I have to play a rugby game this afternoon." So <laughs> we spent about six or seven hours, and then I just jump in my shorts, put my rugby shoes, and go straight to the field. And I, I did that for years. <laughs> awesome. So what's what? What is the 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 place that you the, the show that you? like the most in your in your career as a singer ah well i have so many examples of that i think one of the craziest show we we played i think it was in vietnam uh wow well, now, i've never played vietnam what well, do you, you have to go there they are, they are so fucking crazy <laughs> it, it was it was in saigon and it was a sold out show i think it was something like 400 people or something and uh there was no stage at all so when we arrived we say Where is the stage? And they say, you, you are on the stage. Okay, so the ground is the stage. And, uh, and it was done like uh, we were totally surrounded by the crowd. So we played in the, right in the middle of the crowd. And when we, when we started, it was already so hot that it was, we were all sweaty in one song. And there was people stage diving everywhere. So we, we got <laughs> face during the whole show. And it was it was one more than one hour. Oh, I and lost you. That's one of the most savage concerts I, I, I lost ever. you. You Did there? Yeah, yeah. I'm still here. Wait. Okay, I can. Uh, yeah, yeah. You froze. You yeah, yeah, go ahead. So okay. now, now it's working. Now it's working. Okay. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I yeah. Was. We are exceeding. The, we are exceeding the time a little bit, but uh, you know we are. Like after this, I'm gonna I'm gonna say goodbye. No worry. Okay. <laughs> so you you hear me? That's uh, I have like uh, yeah. I'm I'm losing you a little bit. Yeah. No. Yes. It's fine. Go ahead. So everyone okay. was uh, was uh, crowd surfing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. People were crowd surfing over our faces, and uh, at the end of uh, at the end of the show, we learned that the Vietnamese TV was there. So I think two, day, two days after that, we, we, we saw our show on the Vietnamese TV, something like, uh, you know, like the news or something. <laughs> it was so fucking, wow. I don't know, it was, it, it was unreal to, to see that. All the craziest people on, uh, jumping everywhere with us in the middle and uh, see it in the news during, uh, I don't know, the, the football result and, uh, I don't know, some uh, bad stuff that happened in Vietnam. It was, it, it was, it was very funny and very unexpected. <laughs> Awesome, man. Awesome. All right. So thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for your contribution, telling your story. And um, yeah, so this, uh, if you want to help uh, Benighted, uh, go on the Season of Mist tour. They just released a killer new album. So, and they are planning to record some new, like, uh, B-side stuff at home in the next few weeks to release. So uh, keep an eye on their socials. And thank you. Thank you very much, bro. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. It's a pleasure. And I hope, to, I, hope I will see you soon, very, very soon. And I will come to Italy because I have to taste your wine again. <laughs> Absolutely. You Please be my guest, man.
Yeah, with pleasure, buddy. Cool. Thank you again. All right. Goodbye, man. Bye. Have a nice evening. Uh, I, I have uh, I have some kind of I have a lag or something. Uh, yeah, some glitch or something. Ah, shit. Goodbye, bro. Bye, bro. Take care. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bye. Thank you very much. All right. So, all right. So, guys, thank you very much for being with us. It's been a, a great uh, episode. Uh, you've been so many asking a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, Adrian was. Uh, unbelievably nice and super super cool uh, Julian was super cool as well uh, I really I really feel very lucky very lucky of having this uh, such this uh, you know great musicians uh, in this show and uh, uh, sharing these stories together with you guys are really I'm really enjoying this uh, and I do believe that you are enjoying this as well uh, I want to uh thank everybody uh, at nuclear plus for um, you know the help and the promotion cross promotion every week uh, i want to thank uh, francesco uh, ferrini my piano player who is directing the show right now and uh and thank you all for you know being with us uh uh once again uh, it's very cool if you tag yourself uh, and uh, if, you, if you tag us and you share the stories or a post uh, with a Saturday night uh, lockdown hashtag uh, so we can uh, repost it and share it and uh, yeah, and make it the show even bigger, you know, week by week. So thank you very much. And uh, if you want to support us, of course, uh, the, the best way to do it is uh, through buying merchandise. So our site is uh, shop.fleshcutapocalypse.com. You can go there and you will find a lot of items, uh, T-shirts, whatever you like. Uh, all the support is much appreciated by the band. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, uh, buying music, listening to, to music on uh, all the streaming platforms. And uh, so thank you once again. Uh, I really love this one. And uh, see, you next, uh, see you next Saturday. See you next week, uh, 6 p.m. Central European time on uh, our Facebook page and on uh, Nuclear Blast YouTube channel for the fifth episode of the Saturday Night Lockdown. We're going to announce uh, the next guest uh, early next week. So thank you once again. We really love you. Thank you. Take care. Ciao, everyone.